So now that we know how to create a project and uh, work within Visual Studio, it's time to start actually building things. So for this uh, module, what we're going to do is we're going to be working heavily with the design view. So this is where we're going to start adding different items to our form, our window. And the way that we're going to do that is by using the toolbox. And you'll notice the name of this tab that I'm under, Common Controls. Common Controls is... Um, just a name and convention that shows me all the common items that I can add to my window. And there's obviously a lot more than that, but these are the ones that you're going to use most of all, which is why it's called common. That's the second term there, controls. Controls is the name of all these little objects. A control is called a control because it gives the user control over the program. So a button allows the user to click on something and cause some type of action to occur. Um, uh, text box allows the user to enter text within it and uh, manipulate things and data entry. So uh, whenever we want to use this thing, again, we can either double click on the control to add it to our form or we can drag it over. And I like to drag personally because it allows me to directly place things, but uh, it's a little difficult when the window is hidden behind the toolbox. So what I like to do is just kind of pin this down when I know I'm going to be adding a number of different items. Before we get into that though, I want to discuss some a few small principles about user interface design. So to do this, I'm going to use the simplest program I can think of is Microsoft Calculator. Now this is currently in scientific view and you can notice that there's obviously some big difference between the scientific view and the standard view. Let's just look at the standard view. And what you see first is it's titled, so you know what the, the name of the program is got a quick menu up at the top because this is what we're used to as users and then below that is the focus what everything is going to be drawn to so anytime we enter data anytime that we solve for something we can see that everything is displayed in this window here so it's designed to catch our eye and it obviously looks different from the rest of the program the next thing you'll notice is the alignment of all the buttons it's perfect Every button is exactly in line, both vertically and horizontally, with all the other buttons. They're all the equivalent size. The only exception is the equal button. But you'll notice that the equal button is exactly the size of two buttons, including the space in between, in order to keep all that alignment perfect. And why is it like this? Well, commonly um, on most calculators, you'll see that the equals button is actually like that. Um, and it just allows for quick data entry because the equals button is typically going to be one of the most used buttons on your calculator. And what you need to know is just what how the eye flows over the program. And in a program like this, it's vertical in nature, so the eye is naturally going to go and flow from top to bottom. It's going to look for those things that it finds most important. All the numbers are grouped together. They're all set up in a way that we would expect them on any type of data entry keyboard. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, with the period below the 3 and beside the 0, our basic um, operators to one side, and anything more complicated a little bit farther over, and all of our memory information on the top row. Um, so this is your basic user interface. So the important thing is to make sure the interface flows well, is very clean and intuitive. The user should never ever be guessing at what to do next. So let's go over to our interface design system over here so in our design view how do we actually start doing things well again we can just start clicking things so if I were to try and mimic that calculator over there the first thing I would want to do is I could add menus or whatnot but just to keep things simple we're going to ignore the menu and I'm going to go right to the text box so I'm going to drag it over and as soon as I add it the first thing I want to do anytime I add a control to my program is rename it and the reason why I'm renaming it now is because if I ever try and add code to that control and then I try and rename it later, I might get a disconnect because some code might be referencing the original name and not the new name. So I always want to make sure the first thing that I do whenever I add a control is rename it. So to do that, I'm going to select the item and I'm going to go over to the properties panel and scroll all the way up till I see the name property. And here I can rename it every single control as in when we name the form is a visible element so all these visible elements that we're going to add are going to start with a three letter prefix just like the form did and that three letter prefix should describe exactly what type of 
control that is. In this case, this is a text box. So as you would expect, the three-letter prefix for a text box is TXT. And then I got to give it some form of descriptive name of what this uh, text box is used for. In a calculator's uh, purpose, it's going to be, let's say, results, text results. Got to spell it correctly. And when I hit enter, you'll notice that nothing special happens on the actual form, but now it's updated here inside the properties. What that means is that now the entire project is now aware of the fact that that text box is named to text results. So we can move this and make it a little bigger if we want. And what you'll notice, if I scroll down here, the size panel will actually change, or the size property will actually change as I move this. So if I move this over, if I can select it, I'm just gonna move this down so it makes it easier to select. When I change it, you'll see that the sizes, oops, that's the location, the size has actually changed itself. So you can see that I'm changing the X value or the width. The width value has actually been modified. Um, you can actually expand this so it shows them individually if you'd like width and height. And it's measured in pixels, the little dots on your screen. 462 pixels wide by 26 pixels high. Now, you can manipulate other things um, about it, like it's uh, text and whatnot. So you could give it some default text so for example, it's a calculator, so maybe the default text for a calculator is the value zero. And you'll see the zero shows up. Um, you can also do text alignment. So it's a calculator, so typically you want to align it to the right side of the calculator, or the right side of the text box. So now we can start adding other things like buttons. And what you notice is, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this, and let's say this is the button, um, if we go over to our calculator, MC. So I'm just going to rename this something BTN Memory Clear. So now what I want to do is I want to move it around. And what you can see is as I move it, these little blue lines appear. These are guidelines, and they help us position things in order that they're properly aligned so they never go out of um, sync with the rest of the items that we're trying to add. And you can see as I move it over, um, it's showing it making sure that it's horizontally aligned with the uh, text box as well and then I can do vertical alignment to make sure it's vertically aligned with the text box on both the right and the left side as well as the window itself. So we can use these little tools and um, tricks to actually rename, resize, and manipulate all of our items within our program. Later on we're going to start to figure out how to add code behind these items but for now let's just figure out how to actually work with them. So that is user interface.